What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to talk about another short story by Flannery O'Connor. This one is called The Lame Shall Enter First. This story is about a father and a son who live together. The father's name is Shepard and the son's name is Norton. And their mother died over a year ago. And now it's just the father and the son living together. Now the father is somewhat repulsed by his son because he sees his son as a very selfish person. The story starts off with the son eating a piece of cake for breakfast and the father sitting there watching his son eat the cake and just being pretty repulsed at the fact that his son is eating a bunch of cake and there are kids that are very unfortunate out in the world who have very little to eat and his son cares nothing about them. Shepard, the father, works at a reformatory, which is for young offenders of the law. And he experiences a lot of children who are very deprived and who have very poor family situations. And so he sees his son in comparison to them as a very spoiled kid, someone who doesn't appreciate what he has. But the reality is that his son is about 10 years old and he's not fully capable because of a lack of maturity to be conscious of all the advantages and disadvantages that he might have. Well, there's one kid at the reformatory that grabs the attention of Shepard, and this is a kid named Rufus Johnson. And the reason why he grabs the attention of Shepard is because he has an IQ of 140. This is very impressive to Shepard, and Shepard sees a lot of potential in this child that hasn't been fully reached because he hasn't been given a positive environment to flourish in. And so Shepard wants to bring Rufus into his home in order to allow him to flourish and to give him the opportunities that he wouldn't have elsewhere. And he also hopes to bring Rufus into his home to teach his son Norton that he needs to start caring about other kids. And if you haven't noticed by now, Shepard has a very morally superior attitude toward his son, who he thinks is kind of despicable for being so selfish. And he believes himself to be very virtuous because he works in a reformatory and he quote unquote cares about bringing these kids into his home and allowing them to reach their full potential. So Shepard gives Rufus a key to their home and Rufus starts living with Shepard and his son Norton for a time. One thing that Shepard wants to show Rufus is that the universe is an amazing place. And so he buys him a telescope to look through and he hopes that this will really spark his imagination. But Rufus shows little to no interest in the telescope. On the other hand, Norden, Shepard's son, actually starts to develop an interest in the telescope later on in the story. Now, one thing that is wrong with Rufus is that he has one deformed leg that is shorter than the other. And so he has to wear this big boot to compensate for his short leg. Shepard sees that as the main reason why Rufus acts up and is in the reformatory in the first place. Shepard believes that if he can remedy this problem of Rufus's foot, all his problems will go away. Shepard then decides to get Rufus this advanced kind of shoe that will compensate and even out the length of his legs so that he won't have to walk with a limp anymore. And he believes that Rufus is going to respond very positively to this gift. However, Rufus rejects it altogether and refuses to wear it. After the shoe debacle, Rufus starts to cause more trouble in the house by telling Norton about God and the Bible. Now, Shepard is an atheist and has tried to teach Norton to not believe in anything supernatural. But Norton shows a great interest in what Rufus is telling him because Norton cares about his mom who died about a year ago. And he cares about whether or not she's in hell or she's in heaven. And that's a question that he proposes to Rufus. Rufus eventually leaves the house and the story ends with Shepard the father having this huge realization that he has been mistreating his son Norton for a long time and he intends to go find his son and give him a big hug and apologize for how he's been treating them. But when he goes up into the attic, 
he finds his son Norin hanging from the ceiling by the telescope. The suggestion being that his son killed himself because he was trying to be with his mom, who he was taught by Rufus would be up in the stars. Now, I think there's a lot of things that we can reflect on after reading this story. One kind of theme that I've noticed in a lot of Flannery O'Connor's works is self-awareness. I think we can rate the self-awareness of these three main characters in this story. Shepard, the father, seems to be the least self-aware because he thinks himself to be a very virtuous man because of his occupation of working at the reformatory. He thinks his son, Norton, is a very selfish person, a very selfish kid, and he believes Rufus to have a lot of potential and to be a good kid, but he's just been brought down because he has this deformity in his leg. Now Rufus is pretty self-aware because he knows that he's committing these crimes and he says that he's going to hell unless he repents. And Norton is so young that he really doesn't have the maturity yet to have great self-awareness. But one thing that he does notice about himself is that he yearns for his mother and he's not afraid to chase or to follow that yearning. Another question that I think might be helpful to reflect on is what is O'Connor trying to teach us with this very grotesque ending of this story with the son Norton killing himself? Well, I think one thing we can learn from it is that sometimes self-realization can come too late. And that's what happens here with the father shepherd. He has this very profound realization that he has been mistreating Norton and that he has been acting out of his pride. But that realization has come too late and the damage has already been done. A final question that I think is important to answer is why does Rufus resist the new shoe that Shepard wants to give him? Well, I think there's clues in the story. First of all, Rufus obviously has some pride himself and he doesn't want to be indebted to a man like Shepard. He doesn't like Shepard. He doesn't want to give Shepard the satisfaction of doing something good for him. But also Rufus truly does believe in heaven and hell and he's aware of the teachings of Jesus. And at one point in the story, he says, the lame shall enter first, meaning the lame will enter the kingdom of God first. And so Rufus is like holding on to his deformed leg as something that he believes might save him in the end. If you have any thoughts on the story, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.